Hello, my name is Rebecca McLean, co-manager of the Dunedin Income Growth Investment Trust. The objective of the trust is to deliver growth in income and capital from investing in UK and European companies that meet the sustainable investing approach set by the board. So starting with performance, the trust delivered a robust 6.7% net asset value appreciation over the one year to the end of January 2024, outperforming the FTSE All Share benchmark. This was a good outcome and it is on the back of a good long-term track record for the trust. How is this being achieved? The trust has got an active portfolio of 35 holdings of UK and European companies. We're looking for companies with an attractive total return. So we're not just investing in high yielding companies, but we want to find companies where we believe that they can grow their capital in addition to their income. We're looking for resilient income. It's very important for the trust to be able to pay a growing dividend. And to do this, we want companies which we feel are able to generate income through the cycle and are less exposed to macroeconomic conditions. The trust also has a sustainable investing approach, which does differentiate it in the market. So over the one year, the outperformance came from a number of holdings. In particular, the holdings in the pharmaceutical company Novo Nordisk performed well on the back of better growth coming from its diabetes and obesity drugs. In addition, we saw good performance from Sage, the accounting software company, which has seen its growth accelerate as demand for cloud accounting software, particularly in the US, accelerated. And we had good performance from the data and analytics company Relix. Relix has been investing in its data analytics tools and decision-making tools, which will allow its customers to get greater value from the data and content provided by the company. And we're seeing this translate into good revenue growth. Um, this is resilient growth and resilient earnings, which is being rewarded by the market. The board introduced a sustainable investing approach in 2021. As long-term investors, we want to reduce the trust's exposure to long-term environmental, social and governance risks, which can impact companies and markets. We think about sustainability in its broadest sense. We're focusing on the key and material environmental, social and governance risks facing companies. In the portfolio, we hold environmental, social and governance leaders and improvers. These are companies which have superior operational performance when it comes to managing the key ESG risks facing them, or they have products and services which benefit from structural trends such as increasing environmental regulation, changing demographics, and also changing consumer trends. An important differentiator though of the trust is that we include improvers. So these are companies which we believe through fundamental analysis and engagement are improving their ESG practices and that this is not reflected in the market's understanding of the business. It's helpful in order to improve the opportunity set and we think there's an alpha opportunity from including improvers. It has been disappointing that the share price for Dunedin Income Growth has not tracked the NAV performance. We've seen the discount widen to about 10%. This is in line with the wider sector, but it's been exacerbated by selling from the transition of Aberdeen share plan to interact with investor, which happened over the summer. We think that most of this is behind us and instead we're looking forward and at ways that we can address the discount. The board has introduced a buyback program. We've been marketing the trust and we're looking to continue to deliver good performance in line with the trust's objectives. The trust has grown or held its dividend for the last 41 years and the current yield on the trust is ahead of the market. The dividend is very important to our shareholders and we continue to look to grow that dividend over time. 
In the last financial year, the board increased the dividend for the Dunedin Income Growth Investment Trust by 5%, which is ahead of inflation. So how do we do this? We're looking to have a diverse set of companies contributing to the dividend. We're looking for companies which can pay a resilient income, which is less sensitive to macroeconomic cycles. And we're looking for companies that can grow their dividends. So in the UK market, there's a high level of concentration for companies which pay dividends. So about 50% of the FTSE all share dividends come from 15 companies. In contrast, 50% of the dividends that are forecast to come next year for Digit come from about a third of the portfolio. We're looking for companies where we have confidence their ability to pay that dividend and are less sensitive to commodity prices or interest rates, which um, can be hard to forecast and um, can create volatility through the cycle. There are two companies I'd like to talk about, National Grid and Mercedes-Benz. We introduced National Grid to the portfolio in the last six months. The company is in a good position to grow its asset base over the medium term, given the recognition of the underinvestment that has been made in electricity networks and transmission in the UK and in the US. This translates into higher asset growth, which will then feed through to earnings growth and a dividend which should be linked to inflation. National Grid plays a crucial role in enabling growth in energy consumption, but also that vital energy security in addition to the transition to renewable energy. So we see the company as a solutions company, given its exposure to green capex, which represents about 75% of its investments. The second company is Mercedes-Benz. So Mercedes-Benz is the seventh most valuable global brand behind Apple and Amazon and Google. It's operating in a cyclical market and indeed there are challenges in the automotive sector currently from concerns around consumer affordability given higher interest rates, competitive issues in, the, in Europe with Chinese operators and also supply chain issues. But we feel that the company is in a good position given their strategy to focus on the premium end of the market, which should be supportive from their pricing perspective. The company has um, attractive financials with a strong net cash balance sheet. And this has allowed the company to continue to invest in research and development and innovation as it expands its product pipeline. The EV transition is certainly a challenge for the, the wider automotive sector, but we feel that Mercedes-Benz is in a good position given their suite of products. This will allow them flexibility to be able to adapt to the changing consumer demands. And over time, we think that if the transition to electric vehicles comes as people expect, then Mercedes-Benz should be able to participate. Meanwhile, they're doing a good job decarbonizing their own operations and that of their supply chain. So taking that together, this is a cyclical company, but we think that it's a relative quality player within the industry. The company is cash generative and this funds an attractive dividend plus buybacks. We think this is underappreciated by the market. We're cautiously optimistic on the outlook. From a UK perspective, we see the growth of the UK economy improving gradually throughout 2024 as inflation comes down and interest rates peak. This translates into positive real wage growth for the UK consumer and we're seeing a pickup in housing transactions and survey data, which points to a, a more positive outlook. Meanwhile, the valuation of the UK market is, remains attractive following many months of outflows. And we think this combination of improving macro data and a low starting valuation can be powerful. This translates also to the holdings of the portfolio. We think that the portfolio is attractively valued, but within that UK context, we do continue to look for high quality companies. 
These are companies which are less sensitive to the macroeconomic cycle and are benefiting from structural trends, which means that through the cycle they should outperform and take market share. We're also aware that there are risks on the horizon, not least from sticky inflation, macroeconomic conditions in the US, but also geopolitical risks in, in several markets. So we're cognizant of these risks and we believe that our approach to investing in quality companies does provide some resilience um, if we are to see some uncertainty or challenges from a growth perspective. Thank you for listening to this update. If you'd like any more information about Dunedin Income Growth Investment Trust, please visit our website.